Today we will take a look at the Victron Smart Shunt, um, a shunt to monitor the battery and we will check this with the KIP dashboard, all the details, let's go. So I didn't do videos for a while, but I did three major improvements on my boat and I want to share them and these three are a Shelly device on 12 volt for switching on and off charging, an anchor alarm, very cool, and a smart shunt from Victron. And the smart shunt is the one we are starting with today and then the other two will follow. So the smart shunt from Victron is a little device um, which can measure battery details and not only from your main battery, you get also some details from your starter battery, so two batteries. Um, however, the starter battery is only voltage monitored while the uh, main battery is voltage and current monitored. So it is measured how much current is going in and out so that we really know the capacity at the end, the current consumption and much more details as we get from the starter battery where just the voltage is measured. However, we get them both and the good thing is we get uh, all this little information not only on our app which is made by Victron itself, you can also use the open Bluetooth interface and get them all to your Raspberry and sh you can show them on your dashboard and that's what we gonna to do today. Let's start with the installation. Um, let's yeah, keep this simple because it is simple in fact. Uh, what you see here, um, the smart shunt manual and you can see okay you have to, to mount it somewhere and then um, you have two major screws so really um, tough screws let's say because you need them for the current consumption measurement so here is a higher current which will go through this smart shunt and then we have this uh, two wires which will measure the voltage so what you do and that's quite simple you need to connect a so this screw here to the minus of the load yeah so let's say of everything in your boat which is on the main battery connected on the minus part and then B directly on the battery itself. So on the left side here everything will um, go to the ground uh, to the minus um, polarity here and but before it goes directly to the battery it goes through the shunt and that's how it, it measure is so it's a little resistor inside and this resistor will create a voltage which is proportional to the uh, current and so this can be measured. But we have two additional cables and you can see this even better here. So this is the minus part, your battery, it's directly connected to the smart shunt and then here is the loads um, of your boat, so for one battery, so in this case for the main battery bank and uh, you get it uh, directly here in series so that you can measure it. And then you see that there is another cable and this cable is the plus of your battery and you have a second one at least on my smart shunt so there are different smart shunts for different battery sizes available. I have a second one which is connected to the starter battery to measure plus but only plus and then of course you have to connect your battery as usual it is already connected for sure to your loads um, with of course a fuse. So when you see this that's what I mentioned here is the second battery and the second battery of course is also on minus but you will not measure the current consumption of this battery because only what is going into this battery is measured but you get the plus uh, polarity here measured so you get at least um, the information how high the voltage is on this battery as well. Yeah and then um, there are different uh, ways to connect it depends a little bit on your system but there's nothing which is important for us today. Um, yeah if you have uh, some other Victron components and so on 
but that's your job let's say so i i have let's go back to this one i have this set up more or less um and this is easy to install but we will now take a look how to configure the smart shunt for a lithium battery and also how to configure it to get bluetooth directly to our raspberry and that's the interesting part on a boat so i assume you have connected the smart shunt to the battery as discussed and now you can connect with your app directly to your smart shunt and you get already all the nice details like uh, current voltage power uh, also the voltage of your starter battery and if you have a lithium iron phosphate battery then you need to configure it properly because otherwise this data is not very reliable um, there are some things different especially to the standard uh, lead batteries which are used so on the first one just enter the capacity of your battery the second one is complicated usually you have a current in the specification of your battery when it's fully charged however um, it now depends if you use solar panels on your boat if you have solar panels you might need to increase it because otherwise if you have a small or low solar current but the voltage is already high enough then the smart shot shunt things that your battery is fully charged i had this so i increased this now to 14 volts which is above my level to prevent this for the measurement direction you usually should uh, keep the default interesting one again the loading floor this is if you drop below the capacity of this percentage you can't use it anymore so um this is quite high for lead batteries, 50%. And here for the lithium, you should take a look. Usually 15% are fine, maybe 20, maybe 10, depends, but should be okay about 15. The next one is the decaying current. What is it? This is the current which usually still flows if the battery is full. So the, the current drops down, but not to zero. And this is also important. If this is too low, we have the same like the one I mentioned above uh, for the voltage if it's fully charged. So the decaying current also needs to be increased if you have a solar panel connected. And I increase it to 2%. If you have no solar panel, you can reduce it. But uh, yeah, take a look into the instruction for use of Victron so they explain it as well. And now again a special one the poikot exponent um, this is a number which explains how much energy you can take off your battery depending on the discharging current uh, the higher the current also the less energy you can uh, take off your battery however it's very good for lithium it's 1.05 so 1.0 would be the perfect battery and it's much higher for lead batteries so 1.05 is usually the right number for a lithium um, battery here i will skip the remaining options i think um, you will find them in the manual and uh, we spoke about the important ones but we need to take a look at bluetooth so when you go to settings and there on the three dots i think on the upper right yeah there you find product information product info and when you hit this one you will find an option um, which is called encryption data and when you and you can hit show and then you will see uh, a mac address and a key and this key is uh, something you need to write down as well as the MAC address because this is what we need later on for our dashboard on our Raspberry to get the data from the smart shunt. So now everything is connected. You have all the information on your app. But how to get this on this uh, KIP dashboard, that's the next part. The first thing we have now to do is to install the Victron plugin on Signal K. So I'm on my Signal K server and you see the Victron BLE plugin and I will install this now 
And after this is installed, we need to configure it with the encryption key we noted uh, down before. The encryption key and the MAC address is important. So I restarted the server. Um, it is installed now. So we have here our, where is it? Where is it? Victron BLE. And when we go to our server plugin config, um, we can configure the plug in if I find it. Ah, it's the last one. So it's enabled already and we can open it. And now you see there is a name and this is the first battery. Then you see the MAC address, which we noted before. You see the advertisement key, that's the encryption key. And for the second battery, you also need to enter a name. And then you see a second one, but this is only if you have a second Victron device, in my case, the 230 volt charger, but it doesn't deliver so much interesting information. But in fact, it uh, is possible to add several Victron devices, which is nice. So when, when this is entered, you get the data. So the flashing indicates that Bluetooth is on. And of course, you need a Bluetooth interface on your Raspberry. It's automatically found. If you have it inbuilt, you can use it. However, if this is turned off because of your UART, you need a USB Bluetooth um, dongle uh, to get a second Bluetooth interface. You can go to your signal case server and look up for Victron. You find it as the source of your plugin. And on the left side, you see the name hotel or starter, whatever you have chosen. So uh, you get the current, the power, the voltage, or the values directly in signal K. And of course, you can use this now for all the dashboards, for example, for the KIP dashboard. And I did it here. I um, have the hotel current on my dashboard, um, the capacity of my main battery, and then the voltage for hotel and starter. So how do you do that? So we go to web apps and you find the KIP dashboard here. It's pre-installed as well as instrument panel dashboard, which I used before, by the way. But now I switched over to KIP because of switches, which I needed. So we start it. And now you see um, the first dashboard. When you swipe uh, with a click from right to left, you can add more dashboards here, for example. So we will make now uh, our Victron dashboard. And you can even put an icon here, um, which fits to our Victron, I don't know. Um, let's take the numbers, create it. And now I have a second dashboard. Let's go out of this one. And when you now swipe from uh, the bottom to the top, we are in our second dashboard. If you want to edit this dashboard, you have to again to swipe from the right to the left, hit the lock symbol here. And now we can add components. We have to keep the left button pressed and um, can select, for example, the numeric compo uh, component. And when you do a double click on this one, you can modify it. So let's call this now power, but I'm a, in my development environment, so I don't have currently uh, here my Victron connected, but I can use environment. So for example, yeah, let's take the temperature now of my CPU of my Raspberry. And you see already it uh, offers um, the display formats to the unit. In this case, I can select between three different units. I take Celsius here, but you would have voltage hopefully here if this is delivered and it is delivered by the Victron. Uh, you can configure some other things which are not important for us now. Um, so for example, if we want to show min and max, this is possible. Um, and scale is possible. So for my temperature, I will now take maybe, let's say 60 degrees is max and uh, zero is the start. And I say save and I get the value. That's the way how to build your dashboard. You add now another one. Uh, you can even put some, some uh, special widgets here like yeah, ra radial for example if you want uh, to have something like this gauge but it's it's a matter of taste uh, i like like the numeric more because it's hard to read you have 
Uh, it needs a lot of space because otherwise it's too small. If you want to delete it, by the way, you have also to keep the button pressed, the left button. And then you see duplicate or delete. I will delete and now it's gone. So that's how you can do it. You duplicate, for example, this one. You put another one in. You put the voltage of the first battery, second battery. You can change also the colors if you like. So if you need a different uh, color, you can change it and so on and so forth. Well, and if everything is all right, you get this nice dashboard. And this dashboard um, has all the measurements of the Victron unit. But you see on my dashboard also some additional things. For example, my Shelly, which I mentioned, and this is the old version, it's even improved now. But this is something we will do next time. We will dig deeper into the KIP dashboard. We will take a look what you can do with Shelly. And uh, yeah, this is now a very smart solution, which I got and will share this with you. And then in the last video of this three of a video row, we will take a look into the anchor alarm. Also very interesting. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Hope you liked this one. And yeah, stay tuned. See you next time.